Hey BC, it's Jeff here. It's uh, Saturday morning and I thought I would do a little video video update on the um, week I've had. It's uh, been a really good week for music. Uh, I was able to see Ghost uh, Tuesday night here in Montreal at the Corona Theatre and of course stopping into my local record stores and um, picking up a few things, cool things. But uh, first I thought I'd start off with um, talking about the Ghost Show. Uh, like I said, it was uh, here in Montreal Tuesday night. Uh, Ides of uh, Gemini uh, were opening up the show. I believe they're uh, kind of like a doom metal, more on the softer side, but like that type of genre. Um, a doom metal band from um, Los Angeles. And I wasn't familiar with them at all. I actually got to the venue a little early and um, decided to just go right in. And, and not a lot of people had arrived yet. So um, I just pretty much went right to the front of the stage and just stayed there until the show started. So I was kind of like right up against the stage with a couple of other people. And um, the venue started to fill in and um, Eyes of Gemini ended up coming on. And they were really, really good. They actually reminded me of the band Pilgrim, if uh, some of you are familiar with that, that kind of doom metal band from uh, New York. Um, they kind of reminded me of that, but they had a female singer. Uh, she was amazing, she played bass, a uh, female drummer, and a uh, male guitar player. So it was just a trio, and for, for them being a trio, they certainly made a lot of noise, and the songs were really, really good. Um, I'm actually kicking myself because they were selling um, the vinyl right at the show. Um, right at the end of the show, they were at the back with the merchandise, and they were selling um, a 12 inch uh, vinyl, they were selling a, a, a 7 inch single and uh, their CD, and they were even signing the copies uh, if, you, if you bought one. And um, I was going to buy one, and then I said, well, you know, um, you know, it's difficult when you see a band live for the first time and you don't really, you're not familiar with their material, um, the songs don't really take um, as they would if you're listening at home and you, you can spin the album a couple times, so, so I didn't end up getting it. And uh, then I started checking out some stuff online and I realized, wow, it's, it's really, really good. I should have picked up the vinyl. So I ended up downloading the record uh, from iTunes and I've been listening to it all week. It's really, really good, really well done. And I ordered a vinyl copy from uh, one of my local record stores here, so that should come in soon. Um, and, that, and, uh, and then, of course, Ghost. Ghost was amazing. Um, this was, uh, I ended up buying my ticket through the... Um, their uh, website. I got an email and uh, I just bought it through the fan club and of course this was waiting for me at the door um, and this is uh, my ticket right here. So it was an incredible show. It was my first time seeing Ghost and you know even though I love the albums and I'm a huge fan and obviously I checked out some of the live footage on YouTube it doesn't do it justice to see these guys up close. Like I said, I was I was at the front of the stage, so the, the way that the theatrics came off and the performances, I was absolutely blown away. Hands down, it was probably one of the best shows that I've seen in the last couple years here in Montreal. The band was well-tuned. I mean, they were a, a well-oiled machine at this point. They, they have been on tour non-stop for, I think, three years. So between getting two albums out on the market and then just playing all these shows around the world, um, I just could not believe how tight they were and how, how good the material came off live, especially the new material. Um, I love the new album. I would say that I prefer the first, but the second one is, slow, is really catching up, especially after hearing the new songs done live. I have a whole new appreciation for the album and I've been listening to it nonstop. Uh, all week, which leads me into my next part. The band that's playing in the background right now is a band called Subvision uh, from their album called So Far So Noir. And I found this band through the searches that I was doing on Ghost. Um, it would seem that the singer of this band, uh, Tobias Forge, uh, people are claiming that he's currently the singer in Ghost um, and he's done a very good job at uh, keeping uh, the identi his identity secret. Um, upon listening to the album, I, this is another album that I downloaded on iTunes. It's incredible. It originally came out in 2006. I cannot believe that I'm only discovering this album now. You can hear by the vocals that it sounds very, very similar, similar to the vocals that are done in Ghost. So it's very, very possible that they're the same person. But uh, no matter, I just think that 
apart from Ghost, the things that I have been uh, listening to and discovering online that Tobias has done. He, he, he's a singer. Yeah, he plays a lot of different instruments. Um, he, he's an amazing songwriter. This album here, I, I recommend anyone to, to go out and try to find it. It's very, very difficult to find even online. I mean, I, I can't find a copy on Discogs. I can't find a copy on eBay. None of the local record stores have it, even used. So I ended up downloading it on iTunes because I had no other choice. But it's it really is an incredible album. Um, so that was it. I mean, Ghost was amazing. Uh, it was a really nice night out. I mean, there was only probably between five and 600 people. Um, the upper balconies were empty. So it was a very intimate show. But um, they played like they were playing at a huge festival in Europe. They, they certainly didn't let it affect their uh, performance on stage. So very, very happy that I caught Ghost. I'll definitely catch them again when they swing by in town. Uh, so now I just figured I would get into the vinyl and, and show what I picked up. This is a uh, leftover from uh, Record Store Day. This is the uh, Cal Jader 10-inch um, that came out. Uh, this was a special uh, release on Orange Vinyl for Record Store Day. And uh, this was an original release from uh, 1953. And it hadn't been out since. So uh, to commemorate uh, Record Store Day, they decided to re-release it exactly how, you know, how it came out in 53. And um, it's a uh, jazz record. So uh, it got a lot of great reviews online. And uh, my uh, local store had it for $8.99. So I decided to go ahead and pick that up. Um, staying in the jazz vein, this is an album by Charles Mingus, The Clown. This is a reissue that came out uh, in uh, 1984. I've been looking for this album for years, and um, my local record store uh, had a gentleman that came in and sold, which just sold off his whole jazz collection, and there were some really nice pieces, all mint. And um, when I saw this, I decided to get it. This is in mono. And uh, probably my all-time favorite jazz song is on here, uh, Haitian Fight Song. Just just love this. And um, I've spun this album a couple times already this week, and it's, it's just incredible. Really, really, really nice uh, jazz uh, record. And, you know, I'm a huge metal guy. I'm a huge, you know, rock guy. But uh, jazz has always been something that I've slowly kind of dip my feet in the water and trying to get into and I'm, I'm trying to slowly build my collection and, and, and I couldn't be happier because the pieces that I've been nabbing lately have just made me so happy and uh, you know for, for those of you that aren't familiar with the clown Charles Mingus the clown definitely pick this up um, it was definitely a great week for rock uh, heavy metal vinyl um, I scored a bunch of really difficult titles stuff you just don't see a lot and it was all in great condition so we're going to start off here with Ace Frehley's solo album. Uh, this came out in 91, I believe. Uh, no, 89. Uh, Trouble Walking. I'm not going to answer that. Uh, I've had this on cassette. I've had this on CD. This is not an album that you've come by uh, very often. It's in mint condition. I, I, whoever owned this certainly didn't play it. And um, it's a first US press, so I was really, really, really happy to find that. And it sounds amazing. Uh, next one is the Bullet Boys. This is a uh, another um, great band that came out in the 80s, towards the end of the 80s, and they, they were compared to Van Halen a lot. Um, the singer especially sounds like vintage rock uh, for that period. And um, I, I was completely shocked when I was flipping through the bins and I found it. I used to have this on cassette, um, really had a hard time finding it on CD when I was... Um, trying to upgrade my collection from cassette to CD and then kind of just forgot about it and then when I was flip flipping through the bins found it and couldn't believe it so the Bullet Boys their debut album very very cool next one up is uh, a favorite of mine again had this on cassette this is a local well they're Canadian not from Montreal I think they're from Ontario uh, Killer Dwarves they're a pretty well-known band, uh, but this album in particular, when this came out, uh, I was blown away by it. The songwriting was, I personally think it's the best album that they've ever done. The songwriting was top-notch. Each song is a winner. No filler on this. Dirty Weapons. Um, never, I've never seen this on vinyl. This is the first U.S. press, and um, I found this on the same day that I found the Bullet Boys, and it was just actually a new store that uh, had... Um, not opened up in Montreal, but they changed locations and I wasn't familiar 
with them, and I kind of find, found them by accident. Um, I believe it's called Sound Central here in uh, the Plateau in Montreal. And I was just going through the bin, and I was like, wow, pull out the Bullet Boys, pulled out uh, uh, Killer Dwarves, couldn't believe this. Beautiful condition, and it sounds amazing. Uh, next up is White Lion Big Game. This is something that I found a week after I found Pride, their debut album. I actually prefer this album over Pride. I mean, Pride's amazing, but this album especially, I love the production on it. Uh, they've got a great cover of Radar Love on this, on this album. And it's in amazing condition, and it sounds incredible. This is another thing, you know, that I never bought on cassette. What I, I bought on CD when the CDs was uh, all the rage. Um, I originally had this uh, on cassette and never upgraded. And and you know what? It, not, getting back into vinyl, sometimes you feel a little guilty rebuying the same thing on an older format, especially when you have it on cassette, CD, and then you want to go ahead and get it on vinyl. I feel really good when I come across titles like this that I don't even own on cassette anymore and I never owned on CD. So you feel really justified in picking it up and spending the money on it, especially in this condition. I mean, it, it just sounds so killer on vinyl, especially the drum sound. Very, very cool. Very happy to find that. Next up, this was another uh, copy that blew me away when I found it because it's just not something that you find in the bins very often. I found this one at Sound Central as well. This is a U.S. pressing, first press of Motley Crue's uh, Dr. Feelgood. Um, even down to the original inserts, um, I had this on cassette and I had this on CD. And uh, the cassettes had, a, a, the CD and the cassette had just a variation of these photos, but not this whole artwork. So I, when I, this is the first time I'm seeing this, this sleeve. Very, very, very cool. And it sounds huge on vinyl, uh, just huge. And it's in mint condition. I mean, it, again, it's like someone who took very, very good care of it or, or bought it and, and rarely played it. So I was very happy to find that. The, uh, the last one that I found this week, and probably the one I'm really most excited about, is Wasp. I needed this album to complete my collection for the early Wasp, and uh, this was a hard album to find, and I, I always, you know, uh, kind of put off buying it online. They tend to get a little expensive, and then when you take in consideration the shipping, it's just too expensive. And I've never found this album in the bins. This is a first US press. Uh, in beautiful, beautiful condition. It's got the original inner sleeve. And um, this is an amazing Wasp album. And this is something I never owned on cassette, never owned on CD. So this is, a, you know, owning this album for the first time. Um, I was familiar with a lot of the songs uh, because they made their way onto some greatest hits compilations that I owned over the years. But uh, this is a well-loved uh, Wasp album. And I have to say, on vinyl, it sounds absolutely incredible. So a lot of those uh, metal finds, uh, I actually have to thank Sound Central for that, and, and I'm going to be, uh, it's one of my new favorite stores, and definitely a store I'm going to work into the rotation, um, just to, to the sheer volume of metal that, that I find um, compared to some of the other stores that I love where I can find other things, but I mean to walk in and be able to pull out this, you know, Dr. Feelgood, Bullet Boys, Killer Dwarves, huge. So, um... Yeah, so it's a nice addition, and it's also cool to note that this is the original cover. Whereas the, uh, th this character right here, I, I, his name escapes me now, but uh, caused some controversy, controversy uh, in some of the countries. So they had to rework the cover to remove him and add it in, kind of move this guy over, I think, and add it in a third uh, Ku Klux Klan member. But, so not only is it a first U.S. press, mint condition, but the fact that it's an original cover um, makes it all the worthwhile. So that's it in terms of vinyl. Vinyl, two downloads this week being the Ides of Gemini and what we're listening to right now, Subvision. Uh, I highly recommend checking those two bands out. And um, that's it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video and um, you know I'm going to be hitting the store probably this afternoon or tomorrow and hope to pick up some more things. There's a couple of things that are coming in the mail as well that I'm uh, looking forward to showing you guys in the next video update. I hope all is well. I'd like to thank, uh, take a moment to thank uh, my new subscribers who have joined me here in the last couple of weeks and uh, some of the messages that I've been getting from you guys and questions about my collection and, and my buying habits and all that. Uh, I appreciate the comments and uh, the curiosity and um, 
just know that I appreciate you guys checking out my page, my, uh, my channel here on YouTube. So thanks to everyone. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Bye.